Emma, going back to you, the testimony of Mary Brinkman. You know, it's one thing to have these kinds of uh, recordings, but then to have another witness corroborating it and said, yeah, she told me very similar things. Um, we played a little bit the cross-examination earlier of, of how that went, but it just seems cumulatively it, it's a tough case for the defense. And I'm curious, you know, they can call whatever, wh whoever they want to call to the stand next week when they, it's their turn to take over the case. What kind of witnesses do, uh, should the defense call? And Jesse, I agree with you. The audio recording is very strong evidence for the prosecution. Recordings don't lie. Um, it's not the highest quality recording, but it's certainly better than witness testimony, which, as we all know in this case, may be biased. You know, folks may not like Erica Stefanko. They may have a reason to testify against her because they may want to reduce sentence. So um, I do like the audio recording for the prosecution. Certainly the best piece of evidence. What I expect the defense to do is to call witnesses to further undermine the credibility of the prosecution witnesses. So um, obviously we know uh, Chad Cobb, right? He has an ax to grind with Erica after she left him. You know, and even though he hasn't been promised a deal and prosecutors are smart, um, they don't give a deal until after the testimony because if they do, then they know that's fodder for cross-examination and allows their witnesses to be impeached there on the stand. But everyone knows that if Chad is able to help put Erica behind bars, he's going to get a break from his life sentence. So, I mean, jurors aren't uh, stupid, and that's something that the defense is going to yeah. certainly bring up during cross-examination. Um, but again, I, I expect folks to come and testify Let that you know Cindy, Co Cindy Cobb didn't like her daughter-in-law and things to that effect. Right. Let's um, let's jump back into court, and we'll learn a 